Hi, nobodies. It's my ugly mug again. How you doing? Uh, today's been a good day, but it is storming right now, so I figured I'd go ahead and do my... I don't know. I always think, like, my, my stupid little blog. Uh, nobody watches, so who gives a shit if I post it or not, right? Yeah, I'll post it anyway, because I can. So... I saw Humphrey today. That's my camel. Not really my camel, but he's my camel. It's kind of like when you see like, I don't know, a hot bartender or something. And you're like, that's my bartender. You know? Um, Humphrey's my camel. I discovered him. I know where to find him. He's mine. <laughs> um, and I named him. Somebody told me I had to name him. So I said, okay, I'll name him. Uh, so yeah, it's storming. I don't know if the electricity will go out. I know that either our electricity will go out and everybody around us will have electricity or we'll be like one little strip in a whole blackout zone of light. That rarely happens, but it does happen. Uh, I didn't get much of anything done today. I took a nap. Those are always fun. Because um, I lucid dream. So when I take a nap, <laughs> that's when I'm, I'm more liable to do it. And some of the stuff that happens, it's like crazy. I mean, sometimes I don't realize that it's not real. But um, most of the time I do. Most of the time I'm like, no, they didn't do that. But my son was home because... He had a bit of an accident right before school. So, uh, David had to go get him. And <laughs> he stayed home. So, I was trying to take a nap. And he's like, Mom, I'm here. <laughs> and then the occasional, Mom. Really hate when he says it like that, too. It's like, what? Man. Man, it's like what? I'm hungry. Well, you're seven. Figure it out. Have a sandwich. Have this. No, what he wants is he wants me to make him something, and I am not that mom. I am just not. It's just not. I mean, if I'm making something for myself, yes, I make something for them. But um, a lot of times, I forget to eat, so. If I don't make something, and, and even if I do, I'll go in there and I'll just make like a sandwich. You know, so it's like, dude, it's not rocket science. It's bread and meat. Um, mental health ain't been so great today. Uh, I mean, in the beginning of today, but I did go see Humphrey. So, wasn't that bad, you guys. Because uh, if I actually go out, then that means I'm feeling kind of okay. And about... 30 minutes ago, I talked to somebody on the phone that I really wanted to talk to, and I was like, hey, you know, and I had a pretty good laugh, too, because um, you know how sometimes, like, when you're on the phone with somebody, you hear them say something, and you think that they said something else, or they're talking about something else, and uh, makes for the funniest jokes sometimes, <laughs> when there's a little bit of a misunderstanding, you know, when two people are talking about two different things, and, and then... <laughs> You go and say some, something, and then you realize you're like, oh, that. Okay. I thought you were talking about something else. Especially when you got, like, Beavis and Butthead, Harley Quinn, and Andrew Dice Clay running around in your head. It's like, it makes for some pretty interesting um, misinterpretations of what somebody asks you. You know, they're asking you a completely innocent question, and you're answering one that is not completely innocent. And it's like, oh. And then they're like, what were you talking about? Uh, nothing. Um, nothing. Nothing at all. <laughs> you know? Uh, my really good friends, though, catch on pretty quick. They, my really good friends are like, man, get your mind out of the gutter. Sorry. It lives there. And then sometimes I don't catch it, you know, and that really kind of trips them out when I don't catch it, you know. 
when that double entendre is, is set out there and I don't grab it uh, because that is kind of my thing but I did research last night I was like looking up astrology not not it's like not an obsession sometimes I just look stuff up to look stuff up a, a friend of mine was asking me in a letter he's like how do how does one become an obsession and I'm like you don't want to be an obsession you don't because there's gonna be a day you know it might be a week from now a couple of days a couple months and I'll wake up and all of a sudden that thing that I was obsessed with is no longer an obsession so a person does not want to be one of my obsessions um I mean, the thing with BPD is we do get them. So I have to look at things and see, you know, like, is this an obsession? Um, some people might think that there are certain things I'm into right now that are obsessions, but that's not it. It's like when I'm writing something. If, if every time my kid comes in and I'm, like, irritated as shit that anybody is talking to me, like phone calls, emails, messages, if I'm like, God, leave me alone. That's when I'm in the middle of an obsession. Is when I can't be bothered with anything else. It is like complete, 100% focus on that subject or that project. And, and seriously, like I'll forget to eat. Like really forget to eat. And I just, it, it doesn't work out very well. And... You know, David thinks I'm going through, like, an obsession right now. And I'm not. Because I know the difference between the two. The thing is, though, is when I'm in the middle of an obsession, I can't stop it. Like, when I'm writing something and I get really into writing a story, like, when I feel like that flow is really there. That's a short-lived obsession. You're looking at maybe a couple of days. Can't sleep. Because I'll lay down and I'll think, oh, this needs to happen. That needs to happen. I can't shut that off. So when I'm just thinking about something and I'm excited about something, it's not an obsession. That's something that people with BPD have to, that have BPD obsessions, you'll, you'll get to where you recognize what is healthy uh, love or interest and what is an obsession because I mean an obsession if you look it up it's like an uncontrollable like urge thing you can't help it it's like compulsion um I do not own the rights to the music playing or at least I don't own the rights to play the for the rights or whatever whatever it is that YouTube says about music um but I do own the tr I did buy the track I always say that I did buy the track legally um excuse me um I think I already addressed the vaping thing in another video um so don't even start with it uh I smoked a cigarette the other day because I wanted to drink some caffeine and not get sick, not get anxious. So I was like, okay, I need to dull my senses. Um, but, uh, and then, of course, that night I had to wash my hair and hated the smell of my clothes. So I was like, nope, don't ever want to go back to that. Um, yeah. Um, the obsession thing like like I said I know when I'm in the middle of one and and I will literally drive myself kind of crazy with it and nobody I mean it's like when I'm picking at my fingers when I get to picking just making me acknowledge it like when somebody says hey stop <laughs> it's not a switch <laughs> I mean it's like I, I will literally sit there 
and be thinking, I'm not supposed to pick. This person noticed that I'm picking at my fingers and they're telling me not to, but I wasn't finished <laughs> because there's always the, there's a little piece, there's a little piece. <laughs> and I know there's a little piece of skin there <laughs> that, that I need to get rid of. Um, if anybody's watching this that has excoriation disorder, you know what I'm talking about. That, that one bit of skin that is bugging you because it's a rough edge and, and just bringing it to my attention. I already know I'm doing it. <laughs> Trust me. I know I'm doing it. Cause even when, when I've got fake nails on, I'll spend a lot of time doing like this when I'm nervous. Uh, that's how you know I'm nervous is cause I will pick, but, but with fake nails, they don't get purchase. So my fingers actually end up healing up. Let me see if I can show you what I do. See, it's not super bad right now, but it can get, it can get pretty bad at times. And if I get a zit, <laughs> you'll see it it'll be like this big freaking it's normally like the it's normally like a thanksgiving tradition that i'll have a big ass freaking zit that's all scabbed over and shit <laughs> um but the thing is is like leaving it alone is not really an option when you have it uh when you have that, that aspect of anxiety, just like people who bite their nails, you know, quitting, like stopping is not really an option. So when you shine a light on it, say, hey, stop that. You're actually not helping that person <laughs> um, because you've basically just called them out. Like, You've basically just said, like, if somebody's, if somebody's upset about their nose, say, like, I don't like my nose. You don't want somebody saying, man, that honker of yours is huge. It's like, oh, gee, thanks. As long as I'm the only one who knows this fact, then, you know, like, it's not as bad. The second that somebody else kind of, you know, hey, stop that. It's like, oh, they noticed that I'm doing that. And I shouldn't do that. And they're, they're letting me know that they don't like it. And so it's, it actually causes the person more anxiety to, to say to them, Hey, stop that. Same with like tapping their foot, tapping a pen, uh, clicking. That's another one that you tell them to quit and they're going they feel more anxious because they're doing that because they've got anxiety and that's how they're coping and you're taking away a coping mechanism now I'm not saying that you let them continue to annoy you because if that is annoying you you know the clicking um, I a lot of times will if I'm wearing rings or something I will run my fingers up and down <laughs> to hear the click 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 you know um, the best thing to do for somebody with excoriation disorder when you notice that like they're picking something to the point of bleeding, um, your best option is to distract them. If you can distract them from what they're doing, that is the best uh, thing to do to get them to stop what they're doing. Distraction. Because distraction is ultimately what they're going for. Um, the picking is a distraction technique. You know, they're focusing on that bit of skin or whatever. So distract them. You know, if it's, if it's your spouse, you might make romantic overtures. It, it really depends on the spouse. Like if she's the type that's like, uh, no, <laughs> you know, then but you can always make jokes. You can always like grab both their hands and say, I love you so much. Like looking in their eyes or something. You know, I mean, you can try. <laughs> she might swat you down, but you know, you can try to, to 
to do something to where they'll stop and not know that you're basically wanting them to stop. That you've noticed that they're doing it. You know? Because um, like I said, we don't really want people to notice we're doing it, but we do that in front of people. The nail biting, uh, leg bouncing, foot tapping, all of that is part of anxiety and it's a coping mechanism. It may not work worth a shit because I mean, you know, you can tap your legs all you want. If you're, if you're in the middle of an actual panic attack, that ain't stopping it. <laughs> but it's normally, those are normally like just kind of like I'm bored and anxious. You're anxious of the boredom. Because a lot of times that's what, that's what I've noticed is that it's just kind of like, well, my hands aren't busy and I'm kind of bored and so I'm going to pick. And when I'm in public, it's just kind of like I'm uncomfortable, you know. And that's why I pick when I'm in public. Is I'm nervous. But not like anxiety nervous. Not like, oh my god, I'm going to flip out. No, it's it's like just, just basic awkward introvert nerves of I'm not comfortable. You know. And I guess boredom is an uncomfortable feeling. Um, anyway... Back to the original thing I was talking about, I think, or I recall. Um, I am a Capricorn, so I don't put I don't put like a hundred percent faith into horoscopes or anything like that. I am a cynic at heart, even though I'm an optimist. I am also a cynic, so when I read something that isn't concrete, you know, I I take it with a grain of salt. Uh, you know, I'll look at it and, and I'll look from different advantage points and stuff. So, I have so many of the traits that they give for Capricorns. I, I am definitely capricious. Uh, Capricious. <laughs> it's part of Capricorn. Um, I'm ornery. Uh, and all that. There's just, there's a lot of things that I was reading. I was like, yeah, that's me. Of course, it all, you know, I mean, they could be describing somebody with BPD. Maybe us Capricorns are all BPDers. Who knows? Maybe it's just more likely. Um, but now I'm, I'm not a cold person, but I am, but I might seem cold. Uh, and that is apparently a Capricorn trait that we seem cold. We seem like we don't care, but we actually do. We care a lot. We're just more along the lines of instead of crying, I'm like, how can I fix that? What can I do? What do I need to do to fix that? You know, I mean, giving a hug is not the first thing that comes to our mind when, when somebody's crying. It's, or at least not to my head. But, um, uh, <laughs> son just run in here. Little boy's a trip. But, uh, I totally am a Capricorn. <laughs> um, I lost my train of thought, so I'm gonna go ahead and go now. Pretty good day. Should be a heck of a light show tonight. And I think it is time for me to settle down, read, get ready for my meditation time. And then hopefully tonight's dream menu will be something I can remember. I like the ones I can remember, which most of the time I can here lately. I know I've dreamed, but I don't remember the dreams. So I figured that you know, I want to know what my subconscious has to say to me. <laughs> uh, and not knowing, it's like, well, what were you working on last night, subconscious? You know, were you just like doing chores or what? I always wonder. So, here's hoping that you have a great night, a good restful sleep. So, good night.